Hello students, today we are going to learn experiment done by Harshen Chase in 1953. This experiment proved that DNA is the genetic material. So let's study how they proved that DNA is genetic material. Harshen Chase for their experiment used bacteriophage. So what is bacteriophage? Bacteriophage is a virus that infects bacteria. Then next question comes, why did they use bacteriophage? They used bacteriophage because bacteriophage is composed mainly of DNA and protein. Let us study the structure of bacteriophage. So here you see bacteriophage has head, here you see which is icosahedral in shape. Then there is tail and there is presence of base plate. And from the base plate, the tail fibers arise. So here you see from the base plate, tail fibers are arising. These structures, head, tail and tail fibers, they are made of protein and inside the head, here you see there is presence of DNA. So let us study further details of Herschel Chase experiment. So here, when we talk about structure of this Bacteriophage, it is composed mainly of protein and DNA. So, they had to radio label the protein and DNA. Here, they used a radioisotope of sulfur S35 to radio label the protein. Why this radioisotope was used? It is because proteins are polymers of amino acids and there are certain amino acids like methionine and cysteine which contain sulfur. So when S35 was used, the proteins got radio labeled and as the sulfur is absent in the DNA, the DNA did not get radio labeled, radio -labeled when S35 isotope was used. In order to radio label DNA, they used phosphorus 32 isotope. Okay, a radio isotope of phosphorus, phosphorus 32. So why did they use the phosphorus 32 to radio label the DNA? Because in the structure of DNA there is presence of phosphorus and proteins generally do not have phosphorus in their structure. So when phosphorus 32 was used, only DNA of bacteriophage got radio labeled. Now let us study further details. How did they radio label the protein and how did they radio label the DNA? So in order to radio label protein, what was done? Bacteriophages were grown in a media containing S35. And the bacteriophage used by Herschel Chase was T2 bacteriophage. So T2 bacteriophages were grown in a medium containing S35. As a result, the S35 got incorporated into the proteins of bacteriophage and thus proteins got radio -labeled. Then this bacteriophage which was grown in S35 containing medium later on was mixed with the bacterial host cell which was grown on non-radioactive media. So here you will see these two are mixed together and when this was mixed together what happened? The bacteriophages came close to the bacterial cells and as a result they got absorbed onto the bacterial cells. Here you see this bacteriophage is absorbed onto the bacterial cell. Then they infected the bacterial cells. So during infection what happens? The genetic material of bacteriophage enters the bacterial cell. As you can see the genetic material of bacteriophage has entered the bacterial cell and the genetic material is DNA. Later on after infection what was done? It was subjected for blending. So here I want you to focus here. So after infection, the next step was of blending. So in blending, the mixture was vigorously shaken so as to detach the bacteriophages from the host cell. After blending, 
what was done? The mixture was taken in a centrifuge tube. Here you see this is centrifuge tube. The mixture is taken in the centrifuge tube and later on it is subjected for centrifugation. Why centrifugation is done? It is done in order to separate the bacteriophage from the bacterial host cell. So after centrifugation, the bacteria got settled at the bottom of the tube and the bacteriophages were in the supernatant. And here you see, it is the supernatant that shows the radioactivity. The bacteria which are settled at the bottom, they did not show any radioactivity. Indicating it is the genetic material that is DNA enters the bacterial cell, not the protein. As the protein coat here you see which is radio labeled was, was out of the bacterial cell it got separated in the supernatant and the DNA okay here is introduced into the bacterial cell and those bacterial cells settled at the bottom as a pellet. So here what was the conclusion of this step? The conclusion is it is not the protein that enters the bacterial cell, it is the DNA of the bacteriophage that enters the bacterial cell. So here the protein acting as a genetic material can be ruled out because the protein is seen in the supernatant. I am talking about protein of bacteriophage is seen in the supernatant, not in the patent. So in order to confirm that it is the DNA that enters the bacteria, bacterial cell. What was done? The bacteriophage was grown on a medium containing phosphorus 32. So here you will see the bacteriophage is grown on a medium containing phosphorus 32. And on the other side, the host bacterial cells were grown on non-radioactive media. And after this, these two were mixed together. So here, you see, as the bacteriophage is grown on a medium containing P32, the DNA of bacteriophage got radio labeled and the protein did not, did not get radio labeled. So here, you see, after mixing, what happened? The bacteriophage infected the bacterial cell. So here you see, it is the DNA which is radio labeled and the protein coat is not radio labeled. So once these two were mixed together here, what happened? It led to the infection of bacterial cell by bacteriophage and during infection as you know, the bacteriophage injects its DNA into the bacterial cell. Here you see the DNA of bacteriophage has entered the bacterial cell. Later on this mixture was vigorously shaken here you see this mixture was vigorously shaken here you will see again the mixture is vigorously shaken in order to detach this protein coat of bacteriophage from the bacterial cell so here you see the protein coat of bacteriophage got detached from the bacterial cell so in order to separate these bacteriophages from bacteria what was done this mixture was taken in a centrifuge tube and it was subjected for centrifugation. So after centrifugation, what happens? The bacteria being larger than viruses, they settle at the bottom and the protein coats of bacteriophages which are smaller than bacteria, they get separated in the supernatant. So when the supernatant and pellet was obtained it was the bacterial cells which were showing the radioactivity and the supernatant was not showing any radioactivity indicating that it is the DNA that enters the bacterial cell and directs the synthesis of progeny bacteriophages here you see so here let me explain you with the help of this diagram. So when bacteriophage injects its DNA into the host cell, what happens? The DNA of 
bacteriophage multiplies and it directs the synthesis of bacteriophage proteins which later on get assembled so here you see the proteins here formed are getting assembled to form a progeny bacteriophages here you see so when this progeny bacteriophages were studied they had radioactive dna molecule indicating that dna has genetic information essential for synthesis of bacteriophage proteins leading to leading to formation of new bacteriophages inside the host cell this is how they concluded that it is the dna that enters the bacterial cell and directs the synthesis of proteins of bacteriophage hence it is the dna that carries the genetic information and as the protein doesn't enter the host cell the protein can't act as a genetic material this is all about hershey chase experiment in next video we'll be solving the mcqs based on this